In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. <clears throat> My friend Father Albert has been plying me with questions about Halloween. <laughs> and honestly, it's so full of foolishness, I have nothing to say. <laughs> uh, so if any of you have something that might be helpful to him, get him after Mass. <laughs> All hallows even. The evening before All Hallows Day, before All Saints Day, hallowed be thy name. It's, it's all a little stretched out of shape. It's about the grace of God, not Halloween, All Saints Day. <laughs> is about the grace of God at work in people like us to make us holy. If, uh, if you ask me sometime, I'll give you my talk about what it means to be holy, but you're not getting it tonight. <laughs> um, exactly. Whatever it means, we know we should be. And in our heart of hearts, we want to be. Let us present ourselves now before the Lord, conscious that we are sometimes not holy. And ask the Lord to heal us, forgive us, transform us. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the Israelites. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude which no one could count from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshiped God, and exclaimed, Amen, blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power and might be to our God forever and ever, Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes and where did they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the great time, the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Amen. 
Our response to the Lord's word is, Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he, he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. 
Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are, the, are you when they, insult, when they insult you and persecute you, and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Pat and Mike were arguing as they usually did. Pat was a Catholic and Mike an atheist. It was Mike who complained, look at all the evil in the world. You say Jesus was the son of God. Well, he was born some 2000 years ago. How can there still be all this violence and crime and suffering? For a while, Pat was silent. As they strolled along, they came upon some children playing football in a muddy field. They were a mess. Pat spoke up. Look at those children. Soap has been around for centuries. How can there be all these dirty clothes and dirty children? The point is not, the point is, that soap is not automatic. You have to bring it into contact with the dirt in order to clean the clothes or the body. And holiness does not come to us automatically either. We have to allow ourselves into contact with the Holy One, with Jesus the Lord. We pray you alone are the Holy One, you alone. There are many, many faces of holiness. We have known them and we know them now. There's only one holiness. But if we who have been baptized into Christ allow Jesus to get close to us, let his holiness affect us, we wear his light in our eyes. His glory shines on our face. We are the many faces of one love, the one holiness. We and all the saints, sharers in holiness who have gone before us and give us the hope of heaven. Heaven is our destiny. We were destined by God. When we were created in God's image, we were dest destined, like Adam and Eve, to live in peace with all creation. And we were further destined by our having been baptized into Christ, destined to be transformed into the likeness of the eternal Son, we who are God's children by adoption. If I were to use one word to describe heaven, I would say communion. And by communion, I mean first, a human experience of finding yourself at one with another or with many others. Communion may happen between two persons who love one another, like God the Father and God the Son. 
and communion can happen among people who will all love another person, like the family members of the man whose funeral we held today. Their love for him and the shared experience of loving him drew them together in a special way. There was communion there. Communion needs love to exist. And there is no place in communion for spitefulness or malice or violence. In communion, there is respect for the others and a desire to promote the well-being of the others. In pursuit of communion, and because we human beings are naturally self-centered, there is often a need for forgiveness for both going and coming. The Holy One, Jesus our Lord, has given us the sacrifice and meal we celebrate here as the sacrament of the Holy Communion for which God has destined us, the communion of heaven. And when we enter into this sacramental communion in a truly personal way, we come a little closer to the communion of heaven, the praise and thanks and glory to God in the highest. And we come a little closer here on earth to peace among people of goodwill.